Hello, and welcome to the Penzik uh, themed Bardic Circle for what will be the, the last night of Penzik, have we uh, been able to go this year. And it is a shame, but we hopefully will entertain you tonight with uh, various performances by bards from across the known world. Um, I am Grim the Skald of the East Kingdom, uh, and I will begin. Uh, I will begin with a short piece that is rendered in Norse verse that and I promise you this is a very, very true story. Um, it features uh, the, uh, the combined units of, of, of Concordia of the Snows and Bergenthal, the Snowberg Army, uh, a, um, a unit of which I, I, I am a member. Um, so um, that, that, that's the only reference you probably will need to have. By northern gate, nigh on forest, bright Bergenthal bides at Penzik. A moat surrounds this mighty camp. Bergy the serpent swims happily there. Friendly monster, all folk love her, cherished winder, watcher of home. Well, Bergy, watch o'er folk, and well she was fed with foul and kind. One moonless night, murky and dark, a thief prowled o'er the Penzik lands. He crept through the camps, came through the fields, and stole Bergy, bound her in chains. Down he descended, dragon in tow, to a tent palace in the Penzik bog. He put Bergy in the bed of a thane, hoping she would eat that ale-giver whole. Poor Bergy bided in bedchamber dark, Camp's lord came in, called to his lady. Vlad entered his tent, tossed shoes on the bed, which struck that monster, marked prince upon her. Less roar than a shriek, shouted Bertie, and sprang upon the splendid lord. The two wrestled, rolled through the tent, then quickly this fight cast through the door. Across the camp, combat raged down, the dragon entwined about the tent ruler, but then Vlad seized the serpent's throat. The man or beast battled and won. Helpless was Bergy, held by this man. Sorely she wept and soaked the fame. Seeing the serpent so sad and lost, mercy was granted by that great camp lord. Tied to a tent post was the tamed monster. A sign was staked in the soil beside. Lost moat monster, was made to say. A snowberg sword saw her by the road. Vlad spotted and hailed that spear bearer. <laughs> this now meek monster is not mine, he said. My bed, she graced, brought by some fiend. Bear this poor beast back to her home. Back in the camp of Bergenthal, Lyle and Elwyn laid out their plans. Baron and Baroness brought forth an army to get back Bergy, though battle they must. Lady Emma led these men forth to gate Sally the soldiers true, but they stayed their steps. They stopped men charge as aforementioned sword then said, hello. Bergenthal's court he had come to see, bore he Bergy, she brightly smiled. She greeted all with gladsome licks, came from the camp a cry of glee. The lordly pair lauded the soldier, great the thanks the thanes gave them, and they lifted the charge of the Lady Emma, though <laughs> mere minutes marked out her quest. So do I end this serious tale, t'was short but grand, the great bog war. Bergy was brought back to her home. Fate that befell her was far less than grim. But one thing more, I might add at least. Snares were then set to safeguard the beast. The thief came again, was caught in the trap. The dragon gulped him down with a snap. Thank you, everyone. That is, as I said, an absolutely true story. And now we have Maestra Lucia Elena Bragazza performing Undefeated. Okay, I think I hit the right buttons. Buonasera, amici tutti. Uh, this is my piece, Undefeated. It was written after a particularly bad Penzik, uh, but I share it tonight because uh, I have a number of friends who say it isn't really Penzik until I hear this song. So uh, please feel free to sing along if you like. And uh, 
I, I brought my campfire and my spear. Ha ha. Yes, we may die, but we die with our teeth in their throats. Yes, we may die, but we die with their blood on our swords. Yes, we may die, but we die with our name on their lips. Yes, we may die, and the reaper is near, and he cuts a great swath, and he claims a great tithe, but he's ours, so we stand by his side with no fear. And yes, we may die, but we know it, and we can die well. Yes, we may die, but we die with the wind in our eyes. Yes, we may die, but we die with the drums in our veins. Yes, we may die, but the war horns still howl and we rise. Yes, we may die, but we die in our prime. And old age shall not wither. Our arms are our blades or our pride. And our legends live long past old men. So yes, we may die, but we know it. And we can die well. Yes, we may die, but mere life is not all we can win. Yes, we may die, but mere death is not always defeat. Yes, we may die, but the blood of our line never pales. Yes, we may die and leave sweethearts behind, but leave sons and leave daughters to take up the sword and revenge, and our memories will push them like fire. So yes, we may die, but we know it, and we can die well. Yes, we may die, but we die on our feet, not our knees. Yes, we may die, but we die in our lines, not our beds. Yes, we may die, but the doors of Valhalla swing wide. Yes, we may die, but the short road to glory is paved with our blood and the foe's broken swords, and it's ours, and the stars will burn bright with our deeds. So yes, we may die, but we know it, and we can die well. Yes, we may die, but we know it, and we can die well. Thank you. Thank you very much. So next we have uh, the Foxy Bard performing The Light Above the Door. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good. Good, Scald. I believe I am audible. I hope to God I'm audible. Otherwise, I'm just going to look silly. Oh, good. I am audible. Uh, I'm fine with looking silly with no sound, but that is a completely different act, and I'd have to pull out a different script. In the meantime, Good gentles, as I as I turn this little, little knob so I don't get an echo effect, because that would be bad. There you go. Lords, ladies, and Smith Myers. Good gentles all. We have heard stories of amazing beasts. Songs of dying well in battle. And surely we shall hear more songs of that nature. Because there are many things that people love about Pensick. For example, the things I mentioned before, the pomp and the pageantry, the merchants, the friends, the drinks. But my good gentles, I would like to sing about one aspect of Pensick that I miss terribly, which does not get sung about enough, and I would like to sing about it now. When you crawl to the Porta Castle, as you've done many nights before, You'll find some kind soul has decided to hang a light above the door. Oh, a light above the door, my lads. A light above the door. You'll find some kind soul has decided to hang a light above the door. And it doesn't really matter, good gentles, whether that light in question is just a, a neon glow stick or one of those fancy battery-operated dealies that you actually touch and it actually lights for realsies. Either way, the one who leaves it there is truly a hero. And when you get drunk with the swampies and you're ready to fall to the floor, you'll still find that door to castle by the light of Above the door, by the light above the door, my lads, by the light above the door, you'll still find that porta castle by the light above the door. And when you've had your fill of whiskeys, approximately 16 score you'll still be able to aim by the light above the door 
by the light above the door, my lads, by the light above the door. Pray to God you'll be able to aim by the light above the door. It's why they put those little, you know, those little purse holsters in there. That's what they are, right? Of course. How about a little bit of an instrumental interlude? It's gratuitous, but why not? should find you a lassie or laddie, the type that you simply adore. You'll still be able to see their face by the light above the door. Family friendly, by the light above the door, my lads, by the light above the door. Oh, their eyes will look so beautiful by the light above the door. If you're at home because of COVID and you miss Porta Castle's galore, you can recreate your Pensick at home with a light above the door. With a light above the door. With a light above the door. You can recreate your Pensick at home with a light of the door. And of course, not all of us are trained like the Swampies. Not everyone can hold their liquor. And so, if your mate gets drunk and gets sickly, and they let out a terrible roar, Their vomit makes interesting shadows by the light above the door. By the light above the door, my lad. By the light above the door. Their vomit makes interesting shadows. You know, like those Indian figure puppets. By the light above the door. Thank you, good gentles. And thank you, Foxy Bard, for giving us one of the true icons of Penzik. Next, we have Lady Enya Ingen Maldun performing the dress song, or the Blue Kirtle of Penzik. Hello. So this is our kirtle song because everybody's got to wear clothes, unfortunately, at Pensick, at some in some way, shape, or form. I'll wear my blue kirtle at Pensick. I'll be so cool in my blue kirtle at Pensick. With my laces up tight and my boobs to the sky, I won't be shy, dear, if I should catch your eye. I'll wear my blue kirtle at Pensick. I'll be so cool in my blue kirtle at Pensick. You'll be doing all right in your bog dress so bright, but I'll Wear my blue kirtle at Pensick. She'll wear her loose Norman at Pensick. Her cool, loose Norman at Pensick. Decorations of gold on a field of azure. Her garb is prettier than uh, yours or yours or yours, but not mine. She'll wear her loose Norman at Pensick. She'll be so cool in her loose Norman 
doing at Penzance. I'll be doing all right in my GFD so tight. But she'll wear her loose Norman at Penzance. But wait. He'll wear his full Viking at Pendick. He'll be so hot and striking at Pendick. Wrapped up all in wool trim from his neck to his knees. Celtic dragons as far as the eye could see. He'll wear his full Viking at Penzig, his full wool Viking at Penzig. He'll be sweaty and hot, whether he likes it or not. But he'll still wear full Viking at Penzig. But wait, I'll wear my silk sari at Penzig. A flowing silk sari at Pendig. As a veil on her, as thin as a veil on her figure sublime. Little does she know, we can all see her behind. I'll wear my silk sari at Pendig. A translucent Silk sorry at Pendick. I'll be doing all right till the breeze blows um just right. And then I'll be sorry at Pendick. Thank you. Thank you, Anya. Another wonderful aspect of Penzik, wearing too much clothes for the heat. <laughs> now we have Meggie performing the Penzik Midday Lullaby. We may have to come back to them. Moving along, we have Lady Lily Duve performing Hal and Toe to Pegnzik. Okay. So we've had clothes and monsters and lights over Porta Castles. <sighs> we need to talk about the battles. So key of mm -hmm, IR flat Hallinto Jolly Rumbelo we were up long before the day oh to welcome you to Penzik oh welcome to the war oh Battles are a coming and we'll sweep with realm away, oh. Take this helm to wear to war, society that you adore, your knight's knight wore it and your knight wore it too. Hall in tow, jolly rumble we were up long before the day, oh, to welcome you to Penzik. Oh, welcome to the war, oh. Battles are a coming and we'll sweep mid realm away, oh. Oh, where are the middle knights that made so great a boast, oh? They shall eat the feathered goose and we shall eat the roast, oh. Haul in tow. Jolly rumble we were up long before the day, oh, to welcome you to Penzik, oh, welcome to the war, oh, battles are a-coming and we'll sweep mid-realm away, oh, 
The squires and the men at arms, they went to the field, oh. And scouts shall to the merry green woods to hunt the fighters one and all, oh. Hall in tow, jolly rumble, oh. We were up long before the day, oh. To welcome you to Penzik. Oh, welcome to the war, oh. Battles are a coming and we'll sweep mid realm away, oh. God bless our good queen and all the Eastern might, oh. Send us another Penzik war. Please send one next year, oh. Hall in tow, jolly rumble, oh. We'll be up long before the day, oh. To welcome you to Penzik, oh, welcome to the war, oh. Battles are a-coming and we'll sweep mid-realm away, oh. Excellent, excellent. Thank you, Lady Lily. Uh, next, we have um, Lord Steve of Timewind performing the Adam's Ale. So, Pensick is a lot of things to a lot of people, and some go for different reasons. This song is about something that is absolutely crucial to enjoying Pensick, whether you go for the fighting or the performances or the classes, or what have you. Because while it is many things to many people, the one thing that it is to everybody is hot. <clears throat> Some may sing in praise of milk, and I'd have to agree. At least I do on those days that the milk agrees with me. I love an apple cider, but for my life cannot fathom just why anyone would ever want to drink it hot. For some, it seems, a cup of tea would be the drink of choice. And I'll enjoy a cup of tea next time I lose my voice. But if we talk of choices, then my choice is crystal clear. Eight cups a day is 185 gallons a year. So sing a song of water, every son and daughter. The drink that helps you think is surely in another class. Hey, you look like you water, have another water. So raise a glass of water to the water in your glass. In Persia, they will tell you that sakanjabin is swell, but the taste is hard to swallow as the word is to spell. Further north, the Norse insist that meat is just the best, but I know a couple hundred thousand bees who would protest. When in the cold of winter, wassail can be quite a hit. But I am not from Eldermere, so wassail doesn't fit. Some insist on whiskey, they insist that it's a fact. But I prefer a beverage that will leave my brain intact. So sing a song of water, every son and daughter. The drink that helps you think is surely in another class. Hey, you look like you water, have another water. So raise a glass of water to the water in your glass. Wine is fine, but liquor's quicker, so I've heard it said. And beer's all right, I guess, if you like drinking rotten bread. Some they will praise coffee in both story and in song, but having tasted coffee, I can tell you they are wrong. There's just one drink I'll always reach for when I fill my glass. It's cool and it's refreshing and won't knock me on my keister. It's really no surprise that I should ask for water first. Unless the water comes from Penzik, then I'd rather die of thirst. Still we sing a song of water, every son and daughter. The drink that helps you think is surely in another class. Hey, you look like you water, have another water. So raise a glass of water to the water in your glass. Yes, sing a song of water, every son and daughter. The drink that helps you think is surely in another class. Hey, you look like you water, have another water. So raise a glass of water to the water in your glass. Raise a glass of water to the water in your glass. <sighs> Fantastic. Thank you, thank you. We're definitely covering a lot of the basics of what we need at Penzik uh, at this circle. 
Uh, next, we have Mr. Ana de Guzman performing a sonnet for Viscount Edward. Now can you, can you hear me now? All right, wonderful. Ah, well, I do apologize for bringing the tone down a little bit now, but um, I actually did have a, I had written a praise poem for Viscount Edward almost 20 years ago. Unfortunately, it is in storage and it's been a while since I performed it, so I remembered it not. Um, and I'm sure he would not have wanted me to risk my life to go to the storage unit, which happens to be in the teeth of the pandemic center in Queens. So what I have here is the sonnet I have written for him in his memory. So this is the sonnet for Edward Zifran of Gendi. A comet pierces eastern skies tonight the likes of which we shall not see again. The passing of a giant among men is heralded with its celestial flight. One blessed with skill, with puissance, with great might, adept likewise with needle and with pen, now makes a journey far beyond our ken with bravery, our simple country knight. The evil that men do lives after them we know this is not altogether true, for we have seen the good this man has done. His wisdom, like unto a precious gem, he mended fences, quarrels, not a few. Recall his light, now Edward's race is run. Thank you. A touching tribute to someone who really did mean quite a lot to Penzik. And I, I think um, it would be appropriate to take a moment, a moment of silence to, uh, to uh, remember Edward Ziffren of Gandhi, who was, whether you knew him or not, so very, very important to the war. All right. Um, so I would not have anyone else follow that. So I will give another true, true story, and again in poetry form, of uh, of of uh, a battle at this. In this case, a battle at Penzik. Um, this is entitled "The Five Who Stood." The best tales tell of a few men who stand against many foes and yield not. I offer you the word fame of five who stood. At one gate in a great wall that parted the Penzik field, fierce tigers tore the dragons who charged back, breaking the line. Clefland spears split the Eastmen. Dark moon sword drove in after. When this charge had wounded the East, five tigers in fight remained. White and green wore Four of these, the blazon of their bold household. Noble Carl, quiet but fierce. Billy Fish with blazing sword. Constantine of kingly blood at his side, eager Durkin. The fifth man, a famed man's master, Duke Randall, the dark spearman. Tiger's kin, enclosed by swords, stood bravely, braced against the foe. Bold Gunnar. Battlemaker hailed the five fierce defenders. If you men yield us the gate, we'll offer you honor in single fights. Defer to us. You'll not fall against fruitless odds. Courage showed Karl Mirstapa. He hailed back, to hell with that. We'll not yield without battle. We'll fight you to own this gate. Gunnar laughed and loudly said, well spoken. He spurred his men forward to the five tigers. Great, but brief battle followed. Though these five fell to a man, they fought till their final breath. Eager they to Odin went. Balhall's fields they fight in now. Again, a true story. So next up, um, 
We have uh, the honored lady Chiara de Multipulsiano uh, perf performing a Pensic Polemic, Why I Play. Hello. So I wrote this for Pensic 27, so it may be a bit dated. You know, there are times when we've nothing to do and we're sitting around and we're drinking some brew, when all of a sudden and out of the blue, a thought might appear that we can't misconstrue. A thought, an idea, a whimsy, a notion about how this game that we play with devotion captures our souls with uncommon commotion. And we ask ourselves, why do we fight or fence or arch or request or sew or stitch or scribe or bitch or dance or cook or research a book or smith or strum or brew or drum? And what does it mean? This is fun. Are we lame? Pray tell me God's blood, are we not insane? There are those who won't miss even one single meeting at every event in the kingdom they're keening. And yet, here am I as I sit here and pickle on half Dan's fine mead where I spent my last nickel, dreaming of all of the things I can do in this game I've devoted my income to. I could fight or fence or arch or request or sew or stitch or scribe or bitch or dance or cook or research a book or smith or strum or brew or drum. Well, me, I'm a word right. I fight and I flirt and I try to find others whom I can convert. And these are just some of my favorite things to do in this game that my revenue brings. I think I'm a bard, though some would disagree, though I've written in rhyme, even versed Middle E. And last Pensic, I had a request from some clients to filk up a tune to They Might Be Giants. I thought that I might try my hand at a ballad. I won't document child. I'm told he's not valid. Perhaps then a case could be made for haiku, though mid-17th isn't period for you. So maybe I'll just have to stick to a sonnet as long as it scans and has Shakespeare on it. Of course, I could always fight or fence or arch or request or sew or stitch or scribe or bitch or dance or cook or research a book or smith or strum or brew or drum. I like armored combat. <laughs> Though I used to fence, life steals just okay when your opponent's dense. You'd think that a sport with rattan would subdue the supercilious hullabaloo, where sneakers and plastic and hockey gloves pass and duct taped aluminum shields have class. They're trying to teach me to throw shots that rap, but I'm no Lance Knick, so what's all the flap? If I fight with two sticks and no documentation attached to my helm in Old Norse conjugation, some folks might just sigh and shake their heads sadly and say, can't you see that whatever she does, if she fights or fences or arches or requests or sews or stitches or scribes or bitches or dances or cooks or researches books or smiths or strums or brews or drums, she'll never be period enough for us. I'm tired of hearing that endless refrain from people who play a quite different game. Even when I show some documentation and present it well written with no obligation, I'm told it's not good enough culturally speaking for folks who are constantly status seeking. But then there are those who don't care how I dress, provided I pass the 10 foot test, which I do. I take some pride at least in my garb, though I don't adorn well, I have tattoos on my arms. When all said and done at the end of the day, there are so many ways we can all play this game. We can fight or fence or arch or request or sew or stitch or scribe or bitch or dance or cook or research a book or smith or strum or brew or drum. And whether we like what some others may do, there's room for us all in this dream we pursue. This sandbox is large and there are lots of toys. So play nice with everyone, girls and boys. Please, little children, always remember what these three letters stand for. Society is community and education. Creative is how we show our imagination. And though we may find more than one type of schism, anti-disestablishmentarianism will oft raise its head like an optical prism. We are, in the end, one big anachronism. Seems timeless enough to me. I don't know, do they still use the 10-foot rule? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. That's good, because I'm wearing a pillowcase on my head. Looks like a veil to me. <laughs> Thank you very much. Next, uh, we have... Uh, uh, the Honored Lord James Barkley performing Let's Go Fly a Tent. <laughs> <laughs> 
This sounds unfortunate. Can I be heard? Yes. Ah, good. Can I be seen? Okay, good. Straighten my hat then. And now, as we all know, there are many things we need at Pensick. You know, such as garb and food and water. You know, many of those have already been discussed, but there's one thing that has yet to be discussed, and that is where you stay at night. A tent. I mean, we all require a tent. And this is a song, the first filk I wrote, uh, that addresses that and also addresses something that has happened at many Pensics, and each verse discusses a real event. So this is based on things that have happened. Written to the tune of Let's Go Fly a Kite from Mary Poppins. Oh, with canvas and tent poles and strings, you can have other shelter or wings. In the blink of an eye, your tent's ready to fly. With your fist tightly clenched to the rope of your tent. Oh, 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 let's go fly a tent at the next camping event. Let's go fly a tent and send it soaring up through the atmosphere with all of my camping gear. Oh, let's go fly a tent in the camps of the great Mongol hordes. They have structures of canvas and boards. They are round like a wheel in a wind they can heal. And now you must be curt and go chase down your yurt. Oh, 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 let's go fly a tent at the next camping event. Let's go fly a tent and send it soaring up through the atmosphere with all of my camping gear. Oh, let's go fly a tent in the royal encampment so grand. They have tents that hold all you can stand. Our king's chasing down a tent, leaving the ground. Oh, my lord, what a sight! His pavilion took flight. Oh, 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 let's go fly a tent at the next camping event. Let's go fly a tent and send it soaring up through the atmosphere with all of my camping gear. Oh, let's go fly a tent in the kitchen of your camp so fair is a structure that's lighter than air. In the slightest of breeze, it flies over the trees. And you give a loud cry as you chase down your fly. Oh, 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 let's go fly a tent at the next camping event. Let's go fly a tent and send it soaring up through the atmosphere. With all of my camping gear, let's all go fly a tent. Oh, 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 let's go fly a tent. Hey, this is really bent. Let's go fly a tent and send it soaring up to the atmosphere with all of my camping gear. Oh, let's go fly a tent. As I said, based on actual events. It does happen. Um, I, in point of fact, uh, have a very similar uh, 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 story in a poem, but it took place at a local event, so it'll have to wait for another day. Next, we have Nico de, Nico de Palermo performing Penzik 2017 and the Great Penzik War. Oh. Everybody hear me? Okay. Um, 
I would like to preface this first song by pointing out that uh, a few years back, I was able to cross something off of my bucket list that I didn't know was on my bucket list. I'm a campfire bard. I do a lot of folk songs. And um, I do a lot of Billy Joel folk songs because who doesn't like Billy Joel? And uh, a few years back, I was actually able to perform a Billy Joel folk song backed by Billy Joel and his band. Pause for uh, people to go ooh and ah. Um, I was the only one who knew I was singing. I was on the floor at Madison Square Garden about 100 rows back, but it counts because I sang it. And, uh, and this was the song. I fought the war in Pennsylvania. I saw the foreign knights laid low. I was a leather armored warrior. And I was hale and strong so many years ago. We used rattan swords wrapped in duct tape, but still they struck a mighty blow. We fighters stood arrayed and drank out Gatorade and waited for our chance to go. I fought the war in Pennsylvania. I saw my foemen quake with fear. I jumped into the fray like maniacs, as if there's nowhere else we'd rather be than here. We clubbed the two chucks just like heart seals. They went home crying in their beer. Blew Ethel Mark away and stomped Meridiers, and then we beat up Palantir. I fought the war in Pennsylvania, and then we partied every night. There's nothing like a chainmail bikini top to fill a warrior up with what he needs to fight. We sang our songs and told our stories, drank beer and meat into the nights. And when the kegs were dead, we staggered home to bed and got up hungover to fight. We fought the war in Pennsylvania, but that was so many years before. We learned Rattan was a carcinogen before the lawyers fought Brown Tony in the courts. There are not many who remember. They say a handful still survive. Tell this world of ours about the Pensick Wars and keep the memory alive. And because I don't write music, here's another filk. You may know the tune. My name is Sir Richard. I'm a knight of the East. And I carry a sword and a shield on my shoulder. I fought every war from the Gulf to Australia. None braver, none better, none bolder. I crashed through the Calentia shield wall. Fought two chucks and three chucks and four. And I stood in the front line of the Penzick Field battle for fully two decades and more. But now as I sit in my office, I'm bored, and an eight-hour day seems to last 24. And I long to be headed westbound on I-80 once more to the great Penzick War. My name's Katarina. I'm a shopper elite. And I prowl the bazaar like a lioness hunting. I know just where to find it and how much to pay for whatever it is that you're wanting. I can tell you who's got the best fabrics or boots, books, knives, buttons, and trim. And then there's the glover who lights up with joy whenever he sees me walk in. Now I'm shopping for clothes in a department store and the cashier won't haggle. It seems such a chore and I long to be at midnight madness down in the bazaar. At the great Penzik War. My name is Nicolo. I'm a campfire bar. I know dozens of songs, scores of old stories. For a tankard of meat, I will spin you a tale full of tragedy, humor, or glory. I can sing you the song of the shield wall, and the peasant night's always a hit. And I've sung my way into the arms of more ladies than a gentleman cares to admit. 
As I play Billy Joel's greatest hits on CD, the words for a brand new filk song come to me, and I long to perform it by campfire under the stars at the Great Penzik Wall. I've tuned up my SUV, packed up my gear, spent 51 weeks looking forward to this one. A medieval vacation, a welcome retreat from the mundane world's hassles and boredom. I can handle the changeable weather and a campmate who snores like an ox and a small plot of land whose surface is made up of equal parts mud stumps and rocks. And if ever I'm asked why I'd go to the war when I've done the same thing 25 times before, I tell them I'm living the greatest adventure by far at the Great Penzik War. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, next, we have uh, Lady Eleanor de Saint Remy performing Valhalla and the story that was intended to be spoken with it. <laughs> I am Eleanor de Saint Remy, and this is my telling. I tell this story in partial fulfillment of an oath to a royal lady. And the story I'm about to tell you is how that co out came about. My first Penzik was the 21, quite some time ago. And in a flush of enthusiasm right after war, I wrote my first song. In response to having had the opportunity at my very first Penzik to attend a bardic circle where the lady Leslie the Bard, also known as Leslie Fish, performed her somewhat famous song, Valhalla. And in response to that, and with that to inspire me, I wrote my own song and knowing no better, called it Valhalla. Flash forward a few years and Thorbjorn Osis Branson was king of the Midrealm at Penzik. I had the opportunity to meet him if only in passing. And he impressed me greatly, such that I sort of retroactively dedicated my song, Valhalla, to Thorbjorn Osis Granson, King of the Midrealm. Flash forward a few more years. Thorbjorn Osis Branson, then King of Eldmere, passed from this life. And all I could think about was his lady, Caitlin Stewart, queen by the hand of Osis, and what she must be going through and how she must be suffering. And I resolved that at my first opportunity, I would make my way to Caitlin's camp and sing her my song that I had dedicated to Osis many years prior. I did this the year after when Caitlin Stewart, once queen by the hand of Osis, had descended the throne. And after I had finished singing and explaining the meaning of the song to me, she wept tears of joy and took my hands between her hands and bade me sing this song at every bardic circle I might come to and at least once every Penzik war. And of course, a request from a royal lady is a command. And so this I have done from that day to this. It's about Penzik, but it's not exactly about Penzik because even though we're not on Penzik ground at Cooper's Lake this year, I believe that wherever we are, when we gather, with our friends from the SCA. Valhalla is here. Penzik is here. We carry it with us. This song, with apologies to the Lady Leslie the Bard, mundanely known as Leslie Fish, is called Valhalla. 
Long ago in the frozen north, a tale was told by men of worth of a land that can't be found on earth. You see, the best warriors there can be, so much greater than you or me, would gather in an enchanted realm of armor and sword and shield and helm, where you can fight all day on a field where no one dies, and your foe extends a hand to the ground to help you rise. And when evening comes, you can sit with foes and friends, drinking meat and telling tales and swapping lies. The sword and made Valhalla for the wise. And when I was young in days of yore, a broken arrow proclaimed war. It was Penzik one. And there's been many more, you see, the best warriors there can be. There are people like you and me who gather in an enchanted realm with armor and sword and shield and helm, where you can fight all day on a field where no one dies, and your foe extends a hand to the ground to help you rise. And when evening comes, you can sit with foes and friends, drinking meat and telling tales and swapping lies. This ground will always be Valhalla in our eyes, where you can fight all day on a field where no one dies, and your foe extends a hand to the ground to help you rise. And when evening comes, you can sit with foes and friends, drinking meat and telling tales and swapping lies. This ground will always be Valhalla in our eyes. This ground will always be Valhalla in our eyes. I am Aliador de Saint Remy of the Cleflands in the Middle Kingdom, and this is my telling, and this is the partial fulfillment of my oath. Merci. Well, well, well fulfilled. I mean, yeah, yes, it's, it, is a, it is a fine, fine thing to give tribute to uh, some a king or uh, someone we loved in song at Penzik, and Thank you very much. That was wonderful. Uh, next, next, we have um, Eric of Two Ravens performing Slaying the Giant. Good day, gentles. My name is Eric of Two Ravens. I'm from the barony of Mountain Guard. There. And that is in the kingdom of Abacal. And my iron has not worked. Anyways, um, I am doing a, a, a tale uh, called The Slaying of the Giant. And the um, when I normally tell this tale, I don't actually title it. it. I normally go, I have a tale. So in the spirit of that, I will then say, I have a tale. Um, and in the tradition of this style of tale, it is a tale where... You honor people who are in the audience and that kind of thing. So let me begin at the beginning. In a gentleman who's weary from the road, he walks into an inn. Um, his clothes have patches and loose threads. Uh, they are oddly shaped. Uh, indeed, they resemble Oh, more like a robe than that. And his, his, his legs are clad in in a loose, loose pant-like garment. It almost seems well at some point has been pleated. Uh, however, the travel has no stain. At his side, on his left side, there are two swords. There, are handles, a woven braid along them to be gripped, but no pommel, you will see. Therefore he comes and he sits at the table and the, the young lady who is doing the serving in this tavern uh, comes forth to him and goes, Sir, do you have the coin to pay for your, your meals and your, your lodgings? And he's like, he, he reaches into the sleeves of his, of, of his uh, robe and he pulls out a small pouch and he opens it and the inside there, there are several golden marks. And he says, I believe one of these will suffice. And she goes, yes, yes, what would you like to drink? And I'm like, coffee. What? 
Uh, right, you don't have coffee. Um, there was ale in the last place. You have ale? Yes, yes, of course we have ale. All right. Uh, all right, I'll, I'll have that. Um, and whatever is on the menu is, is fine. Whatever is the house specialty. So some time passes. He seems to pick dirt off his his kimono. He seems incredibly almost perturbed at the idea that he is as dirty as he is. Um, and he gets a tankard of pewter with ale in and uh, a stew and a, and a bun-like uh, thing is placed before him in this wonderful, uh, okay, at least sustenance. Maybe not wonderful. Indeed, he gets into his stew and he has a couple bites. And lo, behold, the door comes through a guardsman and slumps to the floor. He st stands, gripping his swords in one hand, as he looks outside to see that indeed there is something very large in the market square. A man of valor, a man of battle, he charges into the fray, in such, such, he is amazed by a, a man that seems to be 30, 40 feet high. Indeed, he is somewhat surprised by this wonderful com combative person as he unsheaths his sword and notices that indeed a, a gentleman is helping a young lady from the trestles of her sh now shattered shop. Indeed, his red fez, uh, as he scampers away with her, and then, you know, in further, a, a, a woman in red, in a wool tunic uh, with red hair, and she charges with her blade in hand and slashes at the ankles of the giant. Our swordsman there charge for, charges forth, uh, hitting the shin of the right leg of this giant. Indeed, uh, many seem to charge in. Uh, another man of the north, clad in red, and bearded as such, he comes forth with his sword in hand and hits the other leg. Indeed. The guards seem to charge forth, and a gentleman in a red hat and a blue uh, doublet comes forth, a cornet perched on his red hat, as he barks orders to his men to shoot with their crossbows at the giant. He, the giant seems to not even notice the bolts as they penetrate the upper of his chest. Indeed, he comes forth and swings, and a dashing blow staggers yet another set of people along through a shop. And the red-headed uh, Viking lady uh, again stabs at the gentleman's angles, desperately trying to pierce enough of the, of the tenon tenon to handicap the giant. Our swordsman manages to cut him a few more times on the shins. Moving forward, uh, he sits there and grasps the idea that, oh, well, maybe I could dash up those barrels. Indeed, he charges up the barrels as the Baron, apparently, comes forth and starts to his men bring their halberds and start assaulting the giant trying to at least trip him up, perhaps. In such, he goes forth and stands on a sign, jumping forward onto the giant's chest. 
the giant swings at him, knocking him with Frey down to the floor. And he moves forward as he kips up, up, seemingly unmoved. More archers have come and have started shooting him in the rear. The giant turns and faces them and throws uh, his club at them, knocking ten of them to the ground. He then picks up his club and swings at our swordsman. Fortunately, he dodges to the left. And again, he finds himself in the position where there is the barrels and the sign. And then he jumps up. And as the giant comes down with his club, again at the Baron's men, he le leaps forward and takes his sword and cuts the giant, er, ah, son of a dragon, the giant along his throat. Surprisingly, um, there's nowhere really to land. So he tumbles down, hits the ground, and is not particularly, uh, uh, finds himself staggered. He sort of gets up and realizes that indeed the blood is gushing from the giant. And he can see the giant staring at his red clawed hands as he tips over and lands into the inn. I was gonna stay there, he proclaims, as the giant crashes through. Indeed, it seems the giant is now slain. The Baron comes up to him. Thank you, my good sir. Where am I going to stay tonight? Proclaims our swordsman. Well, you will be my honored guest then says the Baron, please come with me and we will mer make merry and we will give you thanks for your uh, for your wonderful um, abilities here for slaying the giant. And in this, the tale goes to its end. I thank you all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very well. Next, we have uh, Douglas Stone um, performing Burden the Pensic War God, written by a Baron, Baron, Baroness Anna von Awesome. I'm on mute. <laughs> oh, heavens, all that introduction. My good gentles, today I present to you Burn the Pensic War Garb, written by the late Baroness Anna uh, Harold von Ossenheim, performed with permission. Uh, I found this song before I ever made it to Pensic for the first time. Uh, this I found it in a song book of local, local bardic pieces from the early 80s. And I was inspired by it, uh, and I'm inspired, in fact, that the details in this song can still be used to navigate Penzik today. So join me in singing at home the chorus. I think you'll pick it up pretty soon. Burn it, burn the Penzik war garb. Burn it, burn the Penzik war garb. Burn it, burn the Penzik war garb, because the war garb won't come clean. The filth and mud of Cooper's Lake embedded in my skirt. 
and everywhere I go, I carry with me Penzik dirt. And rain has made the mold begin to grow upon my shirt, and my war garb won't come clean. From camp down in the gully, a fair lady's moan doth sound. Her veil is soiled, her three-foot train's been dragging on the ground. Her white chemise is edged now with dark grime all around, and her war garb won't come clean. Beside the lake, some samurai have nearly lost their face. Their hippery and their hakama are now a great disgrace. And on the hill, a <sighs> cavalier doth weep into his lace, and their war garb won't come clean. Oh, the Celts and Scots and Romans will never see the mirth of tunics, kilts, and chitons all well marked with Pensic earth. And on Saturday in all the camps of clean garb, there's a dearth, and their war garb won't come clean. Up on the ridge, it's sad to hear the cries of royalty. The rain and mud has ruined all of their court finery. Of Pensic soil, not even our brave peerage will be free, and their war garb won't come clean. As they strip off their armor, you can hear the fighters groan. Their tunics are so filthy that they'll stand up on their own. And you can smell them coming when they're half a mile from home, and their war garb won't come clean. Next year, chat clad in two trucks dress at Pensick, I'll be seen. For two trucks, leather diapers are so little to keep clean. Or better yet, I'll wrap myself in vines of forest green, and my war garb will stay clean. Burn it, burn the Pensick war garb. Burn it, burn the Pensick war garb. Burn it, burn the Pensick war garb, cause the war garb won't come clean. Thank you very much. Again, I love that song, uh, because written in the early 80s, still an accurate description. The samurai are still by the lake, the cavaliers, the peers, and all those lovely things are still exactly where they are, even if they're not there right now. They're still there because we're all just on a very long town trip, a town ride, long ride into town. Yes, I, I think I even know that cavalier who's weeping into his lace. It is a sad thing when it will not come clean. So next we have Matthias Hankinson performing um, a, a Byzantine melodic echoes played in honor of Penzik. Yes. And this will take a moment for me to make sure that it's working. So we're going to go, nope, present a Chrome tab. And I'm going to go ahead and select the right piece and hit share. And hit play. I hope it works. Thank you. 
So I didn't want to say it before. I want a little more time to practice. That was called uh, Makam Echoes Al Hirwaza, a Byzantine melodic echoes played in honor of Penzik. And it is a very, sounds like Penzik to me. Uh, uh, next, we have Heron Solveig Bjarna's daughter uh, performing It's Not a Quiet Village. working on it. I'm working on it. There we go. There we go. Present now. A Chrome tab. It's not a quiet village. Share. It's not a quiet village. No day like the one we hold. And see it all we love to say it's Thank <laughs> you. 
Thank you. Thank you. So uh, next we have um, Meggie, who uh, will present us with the Penzik Midday Lullaby. Yeah, uh, unmuting is something you have to do on your end. Um, there's a, there should be a little red dot. There we go. Perfect. Ah, I figured it out. I'm smart sometimes. Uh, okay, there's, the brief story behind this is I was at Penzik 30 and several, com several camps combined to form one massive camp. And one of the problems that we foresaw was that some people were bringing very small children and other people wanted a very big fire pit. And the solution to this was that the parents of the very small children paid for someone who wasn't a Skadian to come with them for the two weeks of war just to watch their kids. And that seemed like a really big sacrifice to me who didn't have kids at the time. And now that I do have kids, I know it's a huge sacrifice to give up two weeks of your life to go to somebody else's thing just to watch their kids. Uh, and so I wrote this as kind of a, a tribute to the babysitters and the child minders at Penzik, the, the ones who do it for just the afternoon or just for an hour or for the entire war. So this is Penzik Midday Lullaby. High is the sun, and hot is the heat, and you've been too long on your little feet. Now is the time in the shade here to lie. I see you yawning and rubbing your eyes. Mommy and Daddy left you in my care to sleep. Watch as you sleep in the warm summer air. They've donned their armor and marched it away. For there is a war to be fought on this day. The East and the Middle and all of their friends come together once more at the noon. And whomever must fall and whomever shall win, Mommy and Daddy will be home soon. Lay down your head, curl up on your side, shaded from noise and from afternoon light. Dream of winding up and down Merchant's Row In a wagon with your own shield and sword all in tow Dream of the laughter and song in the air Dream of the ladies and lords kind and fair Pavilions and banners with colors most bright A glow both by day and by campfire light the East and the Middle and all of their friends come together once more at the noon. And whomever must fall and whomever shall win, Mommy and Daddy will be home soon. Dream, little mannequin, dream of the day when you shall don armor and march on your way and sit in pavilions speaking of gentler arts surrounded by family and friends of the heart. And when you return from sleep's golden fields, we'll see what activity evening shall yield as mommy and daddy return safe from harm to kiss you and hold you in their loving arms. The East and the Middle and all of their friends come together once more at the noon. And whomever shall fall and whomever shall win, Mommy and Daddy will be home soon. The East and the Middle and all of their friends come together once more at the noon. And whomever must fall and whomever shall win, Mommy and Daddy will be home soon. Thank you. Thank you. So um, uh, lastly, we have is another recording. Um, the um, Commedia da Arte uh, performance troupe, uh, I Verdi Confusi, uh, performing Mug of War, a short Commedia del Arte.
Yes, yeah, checking. Are, do you guys want me to pull up the uh, recorded piece? Or would you no, like no. You guys oh, no, that's live? fine. I'm sorry. Uh, You're going to do it live. Come in. You're going to do it live? Do it live. They're doing it live. We are off the rails. <laughs> My apologies. The recording I was just a backup, but we can do it live. No, you're fine. So, uh, I presume I'm being heard. I never got a mic check, so <laughs> am I being heard? You are heard. Okay, good. Am I being seen? Because I can't see myself on the screen. That too. Good. <laughs> uh, well, sound check. Buongiorno, everyone. I am Niccolo Bartolazzi with the Verity Confusi, and we are going to be doing, well, a little bit different. You're going to have to pay a bit more attention to different screens because I am being joined by two other performers you already saw earlier today. Uh, Eleanor, um, who is Eleanor, a.k.a. Isabella, and uh, James Barkley, a.k.a. Pantalone. So you're going to have to jumping around looking to see where we are. This is our first time performing over uh, a Google stream, so we're going to see how this works. Um, but uh, we, we are very happy to be here today to present for you a brand new Commedia dell'arte piece that was written for this event because we realized we didn't really have any short pieces that were specifically about Penzik, so why not? Um, so let's see how it goes, but there's a reason why we have Confusi in our names. So with much further ado, uh, we present for you Mug of War. Eleanor, you're muted. This is terrible. Isabella, look, people this literally is... cannot hear your fair voice. Oh, there we go. This is the worst possible thing that could be happened. That could be happening. First, I find out I'm muted. And then, I'm Isabella, the daughter of Pantalone, a wealthy merchant here in the beautiful city of Venice. And I was having the absolutely perfect star-crossed romance with a soldier of fortune from the East Kingdom. Except now I found out there's not going to be a war this year. The, the problem is everybody knows that without adversity to overcome, our romance is going to be doomed for sure. I have to do something about this. I have to find a way to make sure that the war still happens. Of course, it all makes sense now. If there's a war, we can get married! Oh! This is horrible! There's to be no war this year! But I am a soldier of fortune! The most well-known, most famous soldier around! The man who needs no introduction! So let me introduce myself! For I am Capitano Moco Blanco Frappuccino El Grande Testosterone. But without the war, what am I to do? I mean, I'm, I'm very glad that there's no going to be these swords and the axes and the, and the people falling over. But, but, but without the war, how can I brag that I'm such a great soldier? And if I cannot brag I'm such a great soldier, how will I impress Isabella? For you see, she is the woman that I love. She is from the middle. I am from the east. And, and a glory and war was going to impress her. And more importantly, it was going to impress her father. Oh, her father Pantalone. He, he would never marry me unless, unless I can do something to impress him. But I can't do anything right now without the war. Oh, this is... This is so nerve-wracking. Oh, I cannot be the Capitano right now. I have to be somebody else. And I have to just find another disguise. Oh, no, I think Pantalone is coming. I need to disguise myself as somebody who's not the soldier of fortune. Oh. oh, this is terrible. You see, I, uh, Pantalone, am a, am a dealer of swords and armor and arms, but, but with no war. I can't, I can't make a profit. Oh, this is terrible for my, 
for my fortunes. Uh, the only thing I can think of doing is finding a, some wealthy individual who I could marry my daughter Isabella to and so that with his bride price and hopefully the rest of his fortunes, he could bolster mine. But uh, where do I find such a person? Uh, wait, wait. What's this I see over here? Uh, he looks like he might be a merchant. Uh, excuse me, sir. Excuse him, <laughs> sir. Yes, yes, you, hello. Hello, Rod. Uh, hey, greetings. Uh, greetings. What, uh, what business might you be in? Oh, well, I am a, uh, a, a merchant of fortune. A, a, a merchant who needs no introduction. So let me introduce myself. I am uh, uh, Merchantino, Beast and Boro, Tigger, Toggle, Anti Arwinio. Eh, uh, eh. Uh, that sounds legit, right? Uh, yes. So, so uh, what what is it you you do? Oh, um, would you believe that uh, I sell mugs? Oh, you sell mugs? I, I gave it a shot, a shot at selling mugs, a mug shot. Let, let me see one of those. Um, oh, oh, yeah, yes, yes. Oh, yes, right. This is nice, but. But you've put this year's date on the mug. Well, Jess, I, I thought I thought I thought everyone would want would, would want this to remember this year. Doesn't everyone want to think of this year and remember this year? Oh, you can't resell them with one date on it. Well, <sighs> you maybe you you are right about that. But, but uh, so how I, many customers have you had? I actually found a few customers who who wanted to buy it because they said, "Oh, it's got this year's date on it," um, and, and I can't buy it next year, so they decided to buy it. Uh, so I had a few customers. I'd say a few. Uh, ten, eleven, maybe twelve, eleven thousand. Yes, yes, ten to twelve thousand. Ten to twelve thousand is what is what I saw. Ten to twelve thousand people wanted a mug like this. They really wanted to be able to get a mug like this this year. T ten to twelve thousand, you say? Yeah, yes. They really wanted to be here to get a mug like this this year. They really wanted it. But this is amazing. You've managed to to make money off of off of something that didn't even happen. I did. That's surprising. Oh, That's remarkable! Why, you're an amazing merchant who can who can make such a sale. And JM, ah, oh. and certainly someone who'd be worthy of marrying my daughter Isabella. Oh, oh, oh. you would you would like you would like me to the 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 merchant obviously definitely merchant to marry your daughter Isabella. Why yes, this would be this would be a fine arrangement. Well, I think I I had such a foolish idea earlier of having my daughter marry some soldier of fortune. I mean that would be a terrible idea with no war happening. Uh, yeah, marry a soldier of fortune with no war. Who would want to marry a soldier of fortune? <laughs> I'm gonna go look for some more bugs I can sell to people. Ooh. Yes, yes, do that. Yes. I am a, I am Fabrizio, a man of the Middle Kingdom. I'm definitely a man. Couldn't possibly be anything else. And, and as a man and a citizen of the Middle Kingdom. I come representing the Middle Kingdom to declare war upon the East. What? War? No, 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 no! You don't. There, there can't be war because that would that would ruin my brand new business model. No. Oh. My plan is working, but but there's a problem. 
someone has to accept the challenge. And I don't know anybody from the East except for Capitano, and I can't find him anywhere. What am I supposed to do with that? Am I supposed to, what, declare war on myself? That's a brilliant idea. Since I can't find Capitano, I'll just be the Capitano myself. Thusly. <sighs> I am Fabrizio of the Middle Kingdom, and I know exactly who you are. James, of course you know who I am, for I am the man who needs no introduction. So let me introduce myself. I am Capitano Moco Blanco Frappuccino El Grande. Huh, I guess it only works for him. Testosterone, and I accept your challenge that you have made. Yes, my challenge. You must go to war, you and the rest of the East. Yes, we will go to war with you, Midrealmers, and we will win. No, we will win. And I will win, my beloved. This plan is working out so well. What could possibly go wrong? This plan is working out so well. What could possibly go wrong? Who, who, would, who would think that it's so much more profitable to be, to be a merchant of fortune than a soldier of fortune? And, you know, it, it's also a lot less scary. Uh, I mean, being, being a merchant is not scary at all. I mean... That would require some kind of, what, midnight madness? No, 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 no. There is nothing scary about being a merchant. Definitely oh, not. Oh, uh, every... Capitano! Oh, yeah, yeah. Except he... that, that's scary. Oh, this is terrible. Well, Capitano has accepted oh. the declaration of war with Fabrizio, so war is apparently going to happen. Wait, I did no such thing. Uh, I did no such thing as what I would say if I was Capitano, which obviously I'm not because I'm just a merchant. <clears throat> wait, 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 wait. <clears throat> so, so that, that gives me an idea. Yeah. Ah, so you, good merchant fellow, um, yes, I, I would like you to do something. I would yes. like you to. To dress, to, to dress as Capitano, pretend to be Capitano. You, you want me to disguise myself as Capitano? Yes, yes. Disguise yourself as Capitano, and then go and talk to Fabrizio, and tell disguise Fabrizio. Disguise myself as tell Capitano. Him peace and love, and 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 and. and you know, get, get rid of this war that's that's going to mess up our new clan. So, yes, All right. this is Capitano. I will disguise myself as Capitano Testosterone, huh? How do I look? Uh, I'm not really convinced, but I guess it'll yeah. have to do. Uh, so I'll wait over here. It's good <sighs> enough. <sighs> The challenge has been accepted, and the war between the Midrealm and the East is back on! Halt! Hold! Freeze! Stop! I, whom apparently, I guess, Capitano Moco Blanco, I think, right now, Frappuccino, that sounds right, El Grande. El Grande! Always that. Testosterone! Apparently I am that right now. I refuse the challenge of war, and I instead challenge you to peace. There shall be peace. That has to be Capitano. Nobody says that name like him, but I can't reveal who I really am. Oh, oh. 
I hear what you are saying, but I must tell you that war is adversity, and adversity leads to greatness and even greater outcomes. But there is a greater challenge than war. The challenge of peace. The challenge of regardless of adversity, regardless of change, regardless of a world that has gone mad, that we still come together, that peoples, all peoples can still come together and find and find peace and find joy and song and music and and love and yeah. find love that, that we can we can do anything if we, for, for love and friendship and, and togetherness. That is the greatest challenge. We improve ourselves and we improve the world. Yes. Capitano, I agree with everything you're saying. And oh. I have to add one thing to that. Yes? I agree with everything you said about love because I love you, Capitano. Uh, <laughs> Capitano was flattered. I mean, sincerely flattered. But, and I hate to say this to you, my heart belongs to another. Another? And, yes, his heart does belong to another. This, this merchant is, is going to be marrying my daughter, Isabella. Yes, I love yes. Isabella. Yes. You love Isabella? Yes. That's wonderful news because... Yes. I am Isabella. You're, you're Isabella? I recognize you, Capitano. And you love Capitano? Huh? Yes, I do, with all of my heart. Master Pantalone, your daughter loves Capitano. But, but, but you're not Capitano. Oh, um. Uh, actually, wait, wait. But, but, um, actually, I am Capitano. Disguised as a merchant, disguised as Capitano. See, of, simple. Course. of course, it all makes, it all sense, makes now. sense now. <laughs> and something else makes sense. This is the hardship that you and I, Capitano, can overcome to have our perfect romance. Oh, yes. You, you are I'm, right. Yes. It, it doesn't. It doesn't matter what what adversity we face, as long as as long as we still come together. Yes. As long as as long as we can defeat the wars within ourselves, or the war with ourselves, or something. <laughs> regardless and, of war or peace, as long as we are together, as long as we get through this, as long as. We know that we are all together, that we are together in love and harmony and joy. Ugh. As long Isabella, as we come together you. in peace and love. Isabella, I love you. Uh, Capitano, I love you. Master Pantalone, can we have your blessing? Please, Papa. I'm a bit confused by it all, but, I, but it sounds like well, yeah, somehow everyone is happy and, and maybe peace is... Not so bad after all. Yes, you have my blessing. Go and be happy in a time of peace. Happiness is a mug that we can always fill. Yes. Isabella, let, let us be off. Let us be off to get married and celebrate yes. this year, the greatest year ever. Everyone will remember how great this year is. Because this was the year that Capitano and Isabella get married. Yes. <sighs> and don't forget to get a commemorative mug. Oh, fabulous. It all makes sense. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Sure Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Molto grazie per tutti. Thank you very much. I believe 
that is the end of the um of the scheduled um uh, performance. So it's um who, those who didn't wish to be recorded slash yes, Doug. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, so the the uh, the post the post uh, rebel room yep. is open and we'll be kicking off. Uh, I'm gonna turn off the recording now. Thank you all for coming. If you guys don't mind hanging on for a second uh, before you hop over to the next room. And we can stop going. Um, okay, I'm going to stop recording. <laughs>